listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable have been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory for death where is your victory for death where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God for he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my sisters and my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing, let nothing, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 51 through 58 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid one thing I ask of the Lord this is one thing I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is still the day the Lord has made. It is just appropriate and right for us to clap our hands and bless our God. Our God still reigns. Come on. Come on. Let everything that have breath, we still have it. And we still, oh God, praise and glory. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, everybody in this place, exalt God. Exalt God, exalt God, exalt God. Exalt God, exalt God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Good times, tough times, sad times, rough times, troubled times. When I'm up and when I'm down, I want everybody to clap your hands and tell the Lord, I will bless you. 
Yes, I will. Tell your will to will to bless our God. Hallelujah. We're in church right now. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and shout glory. Glory. You are a wonderful God. Come on. Come on. Come on. You are a wonderful God. You are a great God. You are a magnificent God. You are a wonderful God. I still owe you the glory. Come on, I still owe you the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Open up your mouth and shout. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands one more time and bless our God. Come on, I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have to prime you and pump you. We do not mourn as the world mourns. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Do me a favor. I think it is only appropriate that we not only honor God but we take the time out to appreciate the fact that we have a God that is not dead and is totally completely alive and we serve a God that rules, watch this, and reigns over death. That's good enough to shout about because it means that this is not the end of the story. That we have a hope. Come on, I want my Jesus people to show up. We have a hope in Jesus. And that soon and very soon, we will see the king some glad morning I feel churchy when this life is over I, I fly away is there anybody here that's just glad to know that the story is not over hallelujah incidentally we are in a Pentecostal church and we believe in praising the Lord, honoring our God. So if you would allow us, family, at any moment, we think it, it is absolutely appropriate to give God the praise. Amen. Can you say amen? Will you do me a favor and speak to the people on your row? Greet them and tell them that I'm glad that I'm sitting with you today. Will you do that, everybody? Speak to the people you're with. We are here to celebrate the life of Maquita Furlow today, and we are praying for this beautiful family. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are honored, we are deeply honored to journey with you, uh, particularly our spiritual son, a spiritual son of this church, we call him Buddha. We want you family to know uh, that we love you and we are here with you and we are walking with you. We will have our scripture reading, Old Testament reading by Elder Mario Brown Westbrook and then the New Testament reading by Minister Ashton Reynolds, and we will have the prayer by Elder Ruetta Best, and then we will have a selection by our choir. We're going to move in that order. We're going to ask that everyone uh, would be gracious and thoughtful to our family. Amen.
our Old Testament scripture. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that hath no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of, of the water of life freely. He that over overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. He shall be my son. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear gracious and eternal Father, first we want to say that we love you today. With all of our hearts, we love you today. Secondly, oh God, we come this morning to say thank you. Thank you for this mother. Thank you for this sister. Thank you for this auntie and this cousin and this friend. Thank you for loaning her to us. God, we don't take for granted the opportunity that we had to tell her that we loved her and that we appreciated her and that we valued her and that we cared for her. Lord, your word declares that you go to prepare a place and that when the timing was right, that you would come back for us. And God, while we stand here in this place, and we don't always understand why you do what you do. God, we understand that you kept your promise. You came back for this mother, for this sister, for this friend, and for this loved one. Now, God, I pray for the family that as they continue on this journey of grief, that you would wrap them in the cradle of your arms and let them know that you are still God. In the midnight hour when the calls stop and the doorbell no longer rings and people stop asking, how are they doing, oh God? Be there for them because we know that grief does not stop in that time. It stops in our time. So be with him, oh God, through the end of this process, till the end of this process. Be with him, oh God, 
For we know that you are Jehovah Shalom. The Lord that gives incredible, incredible peace. The kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. Cover them and bathe them, O oh God, in your peace. And we'll be forever mindful to give your name glory and to give your name honor and to give your name praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Come on, everybody, if you know it's going to be all right, clap your hands all over the room. Come on. It's gonna be, it's gonna be all right, all right, all right, hey, all right, gonna be 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 all right, hey, gonna be all right, gonna be all right, gonna be all right, all right, all right, can I tell you? Joy, 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 it's coming in the morning, in the morning. Pop your head. Woo. Be all right, be all right, be all right, be all right. Come on, everybody, clap your hands all over the room. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Put your hands together. If you believe it, if you believe it, sometimes you got to say it until you believe it. You got to say it until you believe it. You got to say it. your hands all over the room if you know it will be all right tell somebody it's going to be all right hallelujah <laughs> it's going to be all right It's going to be all right. Somebody shout glory. It's going to be all right. Be not weary and well doing. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. It's going to be <laughs> all right. I'm glad about it. Clap your hands if you're glad about it. It's feeling churchy in the room. I'm trying to move forward. But it's good to know that we have a hope, and that hope is in Jesus. So all is well. 
and everything is totally under control. We will now have reflections. These reflections have been very intentionally given to three specific people. If I'm correct, we are limiting those reflections to those three people. So if you have something to say and you're not those three people, just write it down and the family will read it at another time. So we've already designated who those three will be. Mr. Gary Eccles, is that right? Mr. Willie Eccles, those are the two uncles. And then Miss Titiana Robinson, which is her daughter. After that, we will have resolutions and acknowledgments read by Deacon Dorrington. Let's go in that order. Thank you. Mr. Gary. Praise the Lord, everybody. I couldn't see it, but she did. She was determined to learn to drive an 18 wheel. And she did. She called me. She said to me that uh, she was going to take her test next week. And she did. And she passed the test. She said, Well, I. Test is they're going to teach me to drive the 18 wheel. Now, like I said, I didn't see it. You know, I, I never known her to drive a five wheel. And I'm thinking she's going to drive a big 18 wheel. I didn't doubt her, but I just, I just didn't see it. But anyway, she. Uh, to on the west coast and she take pictures at Broadway Center and uh, shortly after that she started driving to Florida now I live in Alabama and she got to drive through Alabama to get to Florida she would always call me sometime I answered the phone <laughs> sometime I didn't because she was, she was long-winded. <laughs> Very much so, long-winded. I can remember her calling me two weeks ago, and I looked at my phone and I said, "I ain't gonna answer that." So she called my son Jerry. Jerry takes me and said, "Answer my key to call." So I'm thinking something was wrong. I called her back. I said, what's up, Makita? You know, I'm just returning your call. And she said to me, I ain't want nothing. And I said, oh, man. <laughs> because I knew that was going to be a long conversation. So she and I talked. She talked to me from Phoenix City to Florida. 
She did. Like I say, she was long-winded now, you know what I mean? You know, when you talk with Makita, you can tell her that, look here, uh, I'm about to eat my food right now, so uh, we'll talk later. She don't hear that. <laughs> she gonna keep talking. So finally, she said to me, uh, I just hit the Florida line. And I'm like, I don't believe we talk from the time you hit Phoenix City to Florida, and that was a couple of hours. That was the type of person she was. She was a people person. She loved to talk, and uh, we all gonna miss her. And I say to her, rest, take your rest. Amen. Saints, it's good to be here. Although this is a solemn occasion, God is still good. I am the one who named Makita when uh, my sister was just about due. I had some friends that I acquainted myself with and the name came up and I thought it was a beautiful name. So I said, sis, how do you like this name? And I spelled it out to her and she used it for Makita. Now, I call Kita a trailblazer because she always did what she wanted to do. She would tell you how she felt about it, whether you received it or not. She told me once that uh, she was going to go to Bible school. I said, well, Keita, if you're going to Bible school, you're going to need somebody to practice on. I had been feuding with my barber. I used to go every two weeks and get the works. But uh, he retired, and his replacement didn't cut my hair like I thought he cut it. So I said, well, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna switch. So Keto would cut my hair. Now, when I went to my barber, I used to be in the chair at least 15 minutes or more. Keto would cut that hair so quick, man, you, you wonder had you been in the barbershop or not. So I said, well, you know what? I like uh, what you're doing, but you just cut my hair too fast. So eventually what I ended up doing was getting myself some clippers and practicing on myself until I cut it the way I wanted it cut. My brother was saying about driving. We used to drive from Alabama to Ohio or New Jersey. If you wanted to rest on that ride, let Makita get behind the wheel. For some reason, she had a passion for driving. And you, you got all the rest you needed when she drove. When I got the word that God had called her home, that was a big shock because we had been celebrating another cousin going ceremony and now she's gone it goes to show us that we don't know when God is going to send that death angel for us and if Keto would want, any, it, it, it want us to know anything about this situation I think she would want us to know that we got to be ready because our time might be up any time and whatever you 
hope for in life. You got to prepare yourself because God is true to his word. He honors his word. Whatever we've earned by way of punishment or by way of reward, we're going to receive it. And I would, I would encourage all of us today to be prepared because the Bible tells us we have one time to be appointed to die. And after that, the judgment. And we all are going to be judged by what we've done. So let's do things that's going to stir up good deeds. So when the time comes, our Savior will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on up and enter your master's joy because you deserve it. To my niece, this was a tough one here, but we never know. We all got to be ready to go at any time because God is true to his word. He only leaves us here maybe a year, a day, or a thousand years. Rest peaceful, my dear. We'll see you again soon on the other side. like my heart has been shattered into a million pieces. I know that we had our ups and downs, but I never questioned your love for me. There are many things I wish I could have said, and there's many more things I wish I could take back. Our relationship was rocky because we were so much alike. Two Virgos in one household. Imagine that. We often butted heads because we had two strong personalities, but I get it from Mom, I never told you, but I admired your strength. I remember when it was just you and I in a two-bedroom house. We had no lights and no water. You slept in my twin-size bed, and it was so cold, but you held me all night. I had no worries because in your arms, I knew I was safe. Mom, thank you. Thank you for loving me and accepting me. Thank you for unconditional support. Thank you for making an impact on not just my life, but the lives of the people you encounter. Thank you for being you. Thank you for teaching me the importance of family, because one thing for sure and two things for certain, you loved your family. Thank you for teaching me how to be a woman, how to love myself and be comfortable in my skin. This journey is going to be different now that you're gone, but all I keep hearing you say is, I raised you right and that you did. You won't be here to walk me down the aisle or see your grandchildren be born, but I know that you will see them before me. Please ask God not to give them your hair type. I'm not sure I can handle it. As much as it hurts and I'm truly not ready, I'm going to let you go now. You earned it, and you did, this, did well on this side of heaven. Now it's time for you to reap the fruits of your faithfulness. I can see you and Shanice now doing the booty bounce. September will truly never be the same, but I promise to always celebrate you. I love you forever and ever. Always, your little girl, Tatiana. Resolutions. Going home, going home. I'm just going home. We, the members of Bethany Christian Church, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. R. E. Hedgeman, render our heartfelt condolences to Sister Annie Douglas 
in the home going of your loving daughter, Makita D. Furlow. We embrace you in a circle of love while praying for your strength. We are God's children. He allows us the possession of an earthly vessel for a time. In his infinite wisdom, he has called Makita home, crossing over from life through death to eternity is the way we must go to be with God. We grieve and are saddened, but when a child is called from labor to reward, we should be rejoicing, for it is a cause for celebration. Precious memories remain from your time spent with Makita. Let the memories lift your spirits and ease your pain and sorrow. It is all right to mourn Makita's passing, but not all as those who have no hope. Our hope is in Christ Jesus, and according to the word of our Lord, you will see her again. Be it resolved on this 18th day of December, in the year of our Lord, 2021, that this resolution is given to Sister Annie Douglas, and the entire extended family of Makita D. Furlow. God will take care of you. Lovingly submitted, Bethany Christian Church, Reverend Dr. R. E. Hedgeman, Senior Pastor. Resolution, Sister Makita D. Furlow. We, the Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church family, were deeply saddened to hear that Sister Makita D. Furlow had passed away. We want to say that Sister Furlow was a very close friend to Pastor Jimmy L. Gates Sr. and the Zion Hill Baptist Church, and we offer our heartfelt condolences to the family. This family grew up here at Zion Hill and was very active in the ministry before moving to Georgia. Whereas Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church will be in prayer for and with you because we believe that Sister Furlow will truly be missed. We know that absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. It cometh from the Lord the Lord God who made heaven and earth. Whereas we, the Zion Hill Baptist Church, desire to acknowledge to her loving family that God has promised in his word, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. John 14, verse 18. Be it resolved that our deepest expression of sympathy be extended to our family members whom we commit unto the God of all comfort, who will sustain them in their hour of loss. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the family and one family and one copy to the church office to document the life experience of Sister Makita D. Furlow. May the peace of God be with you. Submitted this 17th day of December. 2021, Reverend Jimmy L. Gates, Senior Pastor.
Hallelujah. We offer praise. We offer praise. We offer praise. Lift your hands. Oh, your heads to our God. Clap your hands and offer our God some praise in this room. Yes, our God. We are deeply honored to be here. I want to esteem my deepest respect to this August family and to our spiritual son of this church. Anderson Buddha. He's been in, in vision so long, he remembers when my hair was black. And when I wore a size 34, 35, 36. I lost both of them uh, some time ago. <laughs> But I want to talk for just a moment from the statement, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. Particularly when a mother dies, what we lose and what her children lose are two different things. I asked Anderson to tell me some of the highlights of their mother, known as Keita. He said, and he put in all caps, she was extremely outspoken. Y'all know what that means. <laughs> that usually means very opinionated. He said, she was the life of the party. He said, she was very determined. He said, that she was very hard on him and Tatiana. He said, she was the candy lady in the family. And that you had to say her name. <laughs> What's my name? To get the candy. He said she loved planning events for the family reunion. We're here today because that is who she was. We celebrate the accoutrements and accomplishments of a life well lived. We celebrate her love for cooking, her love for bingo, her love for life. She loved her family. She loved her kids. Loved her husband. But it would be, it would be irresponsible of me and incredulous of me to just talk about the celebration of life and not talk about the pain of death. 
the pain of loss, the pain of grief. Because a moment like this is a mixture of joy and sorrow. Sorrow because we won't be able to see her again. Sorrow because we won't be able to laugh with her again. Sorrow because we won't be able to see her smile again. And this is the great paradox of life. The tension of the moment. We like to dance over it and shout over it. But this is a very paradoxical moment. God, how could you allow this? God, how could you allow this to happen? When I was, <laughs> when I was growing up, they used to say, don't question God. I, I don't believe that. Because if you've never questioned God, keep on living. Tell your neighbor, keep on living. Because life will cause you to question everything that you ever believe. Come on, talk to me. Raise your hand if you've ever said, God, where are you? God, how? Could you allow this to happen? We prayed. We prayed. Where are you? Y'all. Sometimes grief can be so bad that it'll make you even say, God, now, if you needed a list of people to take. If you needed a list. If you need a recommendation. Y'all not talking to me. Y'all not talking to me. If you needed a name or two. I can help you out, God. God, why would you take her? God, why would you do something like this? Y'all have never said that. God, what are you doing? And the Bible is full of paradoxical questionings of God. Job said to God, you took my family. Where are you? Talk to me, church. David said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had just been here. My brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. Y'all, even, even Jesus said in the garden, this is too much for me. Let this come. paradoxical question life will make you ask questions you never thought you'd ask but I've come by to tell you that a good teacher is always anticipating questions from the student Jesus told Martha I know you don't understand Martha <laughs> I know you're confused Martha I recognize that this is complicated. Martha, I know you don't understand what's happening, but I am the resurrection. I am the life. Those who believe in me, though they were dead, yet, shout yet, yet shall they live. In other words, this is not the end of the story. Life does not end at the grave. I know how it looks. Quita's life is not over. I know that you're seeing death from this side of the grave. And we feel defeated. We feel defenseless. We feel dreadful. We feel despondent. We feel confused and bewildered. But I want to lay my anchor in Revelations 14, 13 when it says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Yea, says the Spirit, they must rest from their labors. 
but their works will follow them. And there are three things that you must understand that God promises us. There are three things that God is saying in this moment, family. God promises us rest. God promises us reward. And God promises us resurrection. Number one, God promises us rest. Everybody say, God promises us rest. It's easy to focus on when she left and not focus on what she left. She left a world full of trouble. She left a world full of pain. She left a world that was complicated, a world that is perplexed. A world that is difficult, a world that is painful, especially when your body is wrecked with pain. And I've come by to tell you, there is rest in Jesus. Look at somebody and say, there is rest in Jesus. There is rest for your weary soul. There is rest for your troubled mind. There is rest for your weary body. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Watch the rest of the text because it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Talk to me, church, for I am meek. <laughs> And lowly of heart. Here it is. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Family, always remember that when the grief gets overwhelming, there is rest for your soul. When you feel like giving up and you will, there is rest for your soul. When times get tough, and they will, there is rest for your soul. When the calls stop, people stop sending cards, and you are feeling lonely, there are people in this room that can tell you, just remember there is rest for your soul. Not only does God promise us rest, but God promises us reward. I know it sounds like a contradiction, but let me tell you, Tatiana and Buddha know that she is yet alive. You don't see it on this side. We cannot comprehend it on this side. We cannot experience it on this side. We don't sense it on this side. But she's still alive. A few days ago, the Lord called her from time into eternity. The Lord called her from mortality to immortality. The Lord called her from labor to reward. Second Corinthians says, for we know this, that if this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved we have a building not made with hands eternal in the heavens when her heart stopped beating on this side heaven was waiting with open arms on the other side she is yet alive when the doctors said there's nothing else that we can do on this side heaven had already done what it was going to do on this side she's still alive I've come by to tell you that she is where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest help me church She's where there will be no more sorrow. Ooh, she's where 
there will be no more howdy howdy and no more goodbye where there will be no more night where there will be no more medication where there will be no more body aches where there will be no more rejection where there will be no more abandonment where there will be no more problems I'm so glad that when this life is over I'll I'll fly away to be with the Lord are you glad about it shout yeah shout yeah I am so glad that I have a hope she's in the body right here but that's not where she really is she's in the heavens with the rest of the family that's gone on before if you're glad about it clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you thank you not only does the Lord promise rest not only does the Lord promise us that we will experience reward God promises us a resurrection everybody say a resurrection I want to remind you that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord you can say blessed be the name of the Lord because there is a resurrection usually in this moment the preacher keeps hooping but I don't want you to leave here thinking that when I say resurrection, that I'm only talking about the resurrection into the annals of history. I don't want you to miss this family. The greatest way to honor Maquita's life is to resurrect the power of love. greatest way to honor your mama is to stay connected don't fight over frivolous things don't major in the minors if anything resurrect your unity family resurrect the power of strength and resurrect the power of unconditional love the greatest way to honor her life is to live a life full of love a life full of gratitude and a life full of purpose and I'm going to say something that we don't often talk about in the black community but we know it's true she's still here And at night, don't be afraid to talk to her. Don't be afraid to let her comfort your soul. Don't be afraid to let her love on you. She is transcendent now. She is ancestral now. She's still here. She has now taken on a new body. A new form. A new way. She's still here. She's in your hearts. And she will never die. I've got to tell you that love never dies. Everybody say love. love. Never dies. Never. Keep her alive in your minds. And in your hearts. Praying for the family. 
Bow your heads. All is well. And everything is under control. All is well. And everything is under control. All is well. And everything is under control. God, we pray for this family. We pray for Makita's kids. Pray that you would comfort their hearts as they journey in this moment and as they journey for the rest of their lives. Comfort them. Hold them. Speak to them. We pray that this family will bond even closer. And we acknowledge that you are God. You're in control of our lives. You're in control of our destiny. We honor you. And we thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you do me a favor and stand and applaud a life well lived? Will you applaud her? We applaud you and we honor you for life well lived. Come on, everybody in the room. You may be seated. As we prepare to have the recessional, I'm going to ask that funeral director give us further instructions thank you so much the interment will be at Forest Hills Memorial Gardens Repass will be in the Fellowship Hall here at the Vision Cathedral Church. We are asking that the family uh, remain. We're going to ask that everyone seated who is not the family stand and process out give the family a little space as we gather ourselves and prepare ourselves. Thank you to the Vision Cathedral of Atlanta, to all of our leadership. God bless you to our worship and arts department. Thank you. We love you, Buddha. And we're here for you. God bless you. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away. God bless you. I fly.
living. Glory to God. Shall have. He that believeth on the Father and the Son. Shall have. Yeah. Hey, he that believeth. Glory to God. Shall have. He that believeth on the Father and on the Son. Hey, 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 I've got it, everlasting life. I've got it, oh, yeah. I've got it, everlasting life. I've got it, hey, he that believe in, he that believe in, shall have. He that believe in on the Father. And of the sun shall yeah. I've got it everlasting life I've got it yeah. I've got it everlasting life I've got it yeah. I've got it everlasting life say that I've got it Said I've got it, everlasting life. I've got it, hey. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. See, yes, I've got it, yes, I've got it, yes, I've got it, yes, I've got it, everlasting life, everlasting life. Everlasting life, everlasting life. So does my feet, my feet are Zion. I'm gonna lay down my heavy burdens. I'm gonna put on my robe in glory. I'm gonna shout and tell the story how I made it over, how he brought me out, how he saved my soul, he delivered my mind. Everlasting life. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. Every day, every day will be Sunday. Seven will have no win. Everlasting life. I got a mother, mother waiting on me. I got a father, father waiting on me. When I see Jesus, it's gonna be alright. As soon as I see Jesus, it's gonna be alright. I want to do 
one more time. Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. I gave the Lord, the Lord my heart, and I gave the preacher, the preacher my hand. Clap your hands. 